Good morning, Fern fans. We're on day 23 of having a little fern with us now, and I'm just going to do a little video about um, words of commands to use, or what commands to use, or what commands that I use, the reasons why, what they mean, and hopefully that'll help you when choosing uh, what commands you're going to use with the dog. Now, we're at three weeks in, and we haven't done a great deal of stuff with the dog, so I'm going to tell you what I use further down the line or what I will use further down the line at some point. I haven't used all of them yet. I use them all with this one. And I use several other commands when we're hunting or doing um, retrieving work and stuff like that. But for the general pet, you don't need any of that. So I'm missing all that out. I'm just going to tell you the, the general stuff which we use to help us live with the dog a lot more comfortably or better or to get a little bit well behaved. So first one I use is sit. Now, not only have you got to decide what word of command you use, you've got to decide what it means. And the more stricter you are, the better the dog will be in the long run. So when I say sit, I mean immediately put your bum on the ground wherever you are. Stop whatever you're doing, put your bum on the ground and uh, look at me. Now she doesn't have to stay looking at me, but she does have to look at me at least once. And then if she's in the field and she's looking at birds or rabbits, I don't want her to stare at me and lose sight of those. I just want her to look at me once so I can maybe give a command or just keep checking back to me. So she doesn't have to stare at me. What she does have to do is straight away and sit. Before I give any command, I always give the dog's name. So the reason I've always done that is just in case I ever get another dog like I have now, and I can give one dog one command and another dog a different command and they'll both understand which I'm, I'm giving to which dog. When I do give the command, I give it once. I don't say sit, 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 because I've given it once and it should mean whatever I say first of all. And that's what I mean by you should have expectations of what you expect from the dog. I expect the first time I say sit, that the dog sits. So I'll only say it once and uh, I, I'm not going to keep repeating myself and asking the dog because that just loses the effect of the, of the word of command then. So, when I say sit, dog's bum should hit the ground straight away and the dog should stay there until I give it another command. Now a lot of people say sit and then when they want it to do something else they'll say wait or stay. To me, sit means stay. So if I tell a dog to sit, it will stay in position until I give it another command. I don't need to tell it to sit, to stay, or to wait, or anything like that. Sit should mean stay. Now, if you don't want it to for any particular reason, that's absolutely fine, but if you've not thought about it, I think that everyone with a dog, when they tell it to sit, don't need to tell anything else. You don't have to ask it to stay, because otherwise it's just deciding when it finishes sitting, when it gets up and does what it wants. So for me, sit, bum down on the ground, don't move, don't do anything else until I ask you to. Next one is down. Now to me, down means lie down. Uh, same again as sit. It means lie down, have a little check back with me to see if there's any more commands coming, and then don't move until I tell you otherwise. Now what down does, what, when I say down, I say down. I don't say lie down, I just say down. What down doesn't mean, for me, is it doesn't mean get down off my knee, it doesn't mean stop climbing up furniture. It doesn't mean get down out of the car. It just means lie down. I need to be very careful if you're going to choose that because um, my missus, for example, she uses the word down for lie down. She also uses the word down to tell her to stop climbing up. She uses the word down to say get off my knee. And to a dog, you can't have things like that happening. It doesn't mean they haven't got a vocabulary. That word is just a sound. So that sound of you saying down should mean one command. You can't give it multiple commands, it doesn't mean anything. So when my missus tells the dog down, the dog doesn't know whether she means lie down, climb down, stop jumping or whatever. So when my missus says down, the dog basically just ignores her. So give it one command, have one meaning, and then if you need other things like that, be very careful what you're gonna use. If you're going to use different commands as well, try and avoid them having the same sounds, um, especially with consonants. Dogs can't tell the difference really between vowels, but they can with consonants. So uh, you need to 
choose words or sounds that sound very different from each other. So uh, the next command that I use, I made a note of everything here just so I don't forget. The next command I use is come away. So I tell her, I say to the dog, come away if she's sniffing on something else she shouldn't be doing or if she's, say if, if you come into my house and she started sniffing at you and you didn't like it, I say come away and she'll move away from whatever she's doing. I'll say with me, which means come in my direction and be in my immediate vicinity. Uh, it doesn't mean heal, it doesn't mean you've got to stay rigidly next to it, it means you've got to be within a few foot of me and you've got to move in the same direction that I'm moving uh, and be with me. Um, another one I use is free, so when I'm out with the dog training or sometimes I'll go for a walk, I'll have the dog walk into my heel or I'll have the dog with me or I'll make the dog sit or I'll do a few little drills with the dog. At the end of all that, to tell the dog that she's done well and now that she's free to go and be a dog and sniff around and run around, I'll use the word to command free and then the dog knows she can do whatever she wants. Uh, I use the word for recall of come, so I'll say the dog's name and then I'll say come. Now to me, that means straight away, stop what you're doing, come to me, sit right in front of me, give me good eye contact, just look up at me and don't do anything else. Now to me, I'm strict with it because I expect the same thing every single time, it means sit in front of me. It doesn't mean sit there, it doesn't mean sit there. Whichever angle that dog's come from, so she could come from behind me, in front of me, beside me, it means come, rearrange yourself in front of me and look up at me and wait for more instructions. To some other people, you might not want to be that strict, you might just want your dog to come back to you and be somewhere where you can grab it, put a lead on it, uh, where you can just, just grab hold of it for a minute, or you can call it away from distractions, or where you can call it away from danger, and it's just around you. That's completely up to you, but you've, you've got to be as strict as, as you want expectations down the line. For me, I'm very strict, I have... Um, my expectations are quite rigid. I don't mean come to me and do what you want. I mean come to me, sit your bum down and don't move. So I enforce that from day one. Uh, wait. So I use, the, I use the word of command wait to tell the dog to where, whatever, wherever the dog is, to stop what you're doing, don't move, wait exactly where you are. Now that can be Sometimes the dog can be in a down position, sometimes the dog can be in a sitting position, sometimes the dog can be in a standing position. I just say wait and it doesn't move. The dog can get up out of a down or sit into a stand or to mix and match. But the, the important thing is that the dog waits, it doesn't go anywhere. So we use the word heel. Now when I say the word heel, the dog should immediately come to my left leg, it's always my left leg, sit at my left leg with, his, with her head in line with my left leg. She'll then wait there. If I then move off, if my right leg moves, the dog will stay where she is. If my left leg moves, the dog moves with my left leg uh, at the same speed, in the same direction. So if I go backwards, if my left leg goes backwards, the dog goes backwards. If I turn around, the dog turns around. If I go forward, the dog, t the dog goes forward and the dog will also match my pace. So it matches my direction and my pace, and it stays at my left hand side. Uh, I use the word of command legs. So when I say legs, the dog should go in between my legs, stand in between my legs, look up at me, and then match my direction, match my pace. So that's a good one for, um, at first, the reason I've taught that is because when my missus was hoovering, the dog was chasing the hoover around despite all the hoover drills we've done. So I taught the dog legs, the dog stands in between my legs, or now and my missus' legs, looks up at us, and then we can pick the hoover up and walk around the kitchen hoovering, and the dog is in between our legs just looking at us. Uh, so it's, she's not chasing the hoover anymore, she's just completely um, sort of in that position and stays in it. Uh, I use the word of command front. So similar to when I say come, the dog sits in front of me, and looks up at me, front means that as well. But then if I move forward, backwards, sideways, the dog will match me. So she just sits in front of me, 
turn backwards, forwards, sideways, left, right, whatever I do, she matches it. Uh, I use the word of command, leave it. So that's to tell the dog whatever's there on the ground, leave it, don't sniff it, don't touch it, don't eat it, completely leave it alone, ignore it. And then following on from that and the opposite, I use the word take it. So that's telling the dog to whatever that is, you're allowed to take it if you want it. Uh, I use the word side. I, I don't use the word side yet, but I will use the word side. And that will mean exactly the same as heel, but on my right hand side. So the dog will stand on my right hand side. Whenever my right leg moves, the dog will move with my right leg. And um, it, she'll match my direction, she'll match my pace. So wherever I go, the dog will be stuck to my right leg, same as she does now for heel. Uh, we use the word of command clean, so this is quite a useful one when we've come in from taking a dog to the toilet. Um, the dog knows if she wants to go through a doorway she needs to sit, so I'll come back into the garden, the dog will sit by the door, I'll take the lead off her, I'll come in and close the door behind me with the dog still outside and she'll just sit there and wait. I will then take my coat off, take my shoes off, whatever I've got to do and then I'll say, I'll open the door and I'll say clean. When I say clean, the dog comes in, sits on the mat that's by the back door, and then waits there. And then we can use a baby wipe and I'll say, pass me a paw, and she'll pass me a paw, and I'll wipe her paws. And then I'll say other paw, and she'll pass me another paw. Then she stands up and we'll wipe her feet. It could be sometimes if it's been raining, we or she's been like running in long wet grass, then we get a towel and we can scrub it down. And clean basically means stand by the back door and be groomed. Then we do a bit of brushing with her as well. And that's a quite useful one because uh, sometimes people struggle if you get a towel out or something like that to try and clean the dog. The dog chases after the towel and turns it into a game. Uh, we use the word cage and we say, I'm going to be careful because the dog will probably try and do it now, but I'll say in your cage or out your cage. And that means go into your cage or it means come out of your cage. So if I open the door, the dog stays in the cage even though the door's open until we say out your cage and then she'll come out of the cage. Uh, we also use we use one which is quite useful to us. We say, go see mommy. Or I say, go see mommy. Uh, aren't you sorry? It, 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 I've just said it in the same tone that I use it so the dog thought I was telling her to do it then. Uh, I, I say, go see mommy. And my wife says, go see daddy, and that will mean come to me or go to my wife. And that's quite useful if I'm at the back door trying to put my shoes on and they just they think they're going out and they get a lot excited. I can say, go see mummy. They go and see the mummy and they leave me alone in peace. Uh, we say, busy, busy. That's a toilet command. So for, now, for instance, now it's five o'clock in the morning, it's raining. I've just taken the dogs out. I don't want to be uh, standing around for 20 minutes while they decide where which blade of grass shall I be on. I'll have a little sniff of this, I'll have a little sniff of that. I'm taking them out, I tell them to go to the toilet, I'll say busy busy, and they do it. And then I come back in and I've stood around for 20 minutes in the cold and the rain and the wet. And then I also use the word in. Now in means go through a doorway, go through a gateway, go through a threshold. And it doesn't just mean go into the building, it also means come out of the building or go into the field. It, it also means come out of the field, it just means go through that doorway. Um, now the reason I don't say out is because one, a dog doesn't need to know the difference between indoors or outdoors. And two, out is a different command which I give it, uh, which is to do with hunting and retrieving. So uh, in just means go through a doorway, go through a gateway. And that's quite useful. It establishes that I'm the leader. I always go through a gateway or a doorway before that dog. And it also means I can go through uh, a doorway. If I if I go out onto a busy road from a friend's house or something, the dog sits at the door. I can make sure there are no other aggressive dogs around. I can make sure there's no traffic around. And then when I'm happy, I can say in and the dog go through the doorway. Uh, now they're all I can think of at the minute. I'm sure some people might have different things that they want their dog to do and there probably are things that I ask my dog to do as well and I, I've forgotten to make a note of but as we teach each thing to the dog I'll make a series of videos explaining how I do it anyway so um, hopefully that's made it a little bit clearer for you guys to decide what you want your dogs to do 
which commands you want to do, you don't have to do the same. And there's a lot of people who do completely varied and different things. As long as you can help your dog associate that sound with an action, then uh, you're going to get the, hopefully, get the results you want. Now, you would be as strict as you want with it. Uh, I'm very, very strict. I have quite high expectations. If I say something to my dog, I expect it to do exactly what I mean. And I have the same meaning for that word every single time I say it. So, if I say come, then every time I say it, I want the dog to come to me. I don't mean come near me and then just do what you want. I don't mean come near me so I can grab you. I mean come here, sit right in front of me and don't, and don't do anything else. Uh, same with, I don't know, say uh, in. When I say in, I expect the dog to go through that doorway first time, every time. It's not an option. I'm telling the dog to go through that doorway. And the, the stricter you are, the easier it becomes later down the line. Once you start adding distractions, once you've got another dog across the field um, that your dog's looking at over, the, over like that, you want your dog to do whatever you want it to do first time, every single time. And the way to do that is in training, be very strict, rigid, and have a quite a good regime. And the dog will eventually learn when mummy or daddy says, do this, I'll probably do it. And uh, everyone will be happy then. So that's what I'm going to use. I'll do a few more videos on adding hand signals and stuff to that or body language to that and then hopefully you can decide what you want your dog to do and then we can learn how to get your dog to do that once you've decided.